G'day, Sylvia V here. How is everybody? Hope everybody's well. Well, time for another vlog. This time, more of a rant. Yeah, I know, I've never done a rant video before. A rant video. Well, strange things have been happening the last few weeks to justify this rant video. And there's three topics I want to talk about, all Tesla related. So, yeah. for all you Tesla fanboys out there watching, yeah, tag me in the comments. If anybody be actually watching. So, topic number one. Tesla Model 3 ordering and delivery dates. Well, as people know, the Tesla Model 3s have arrived in Australia, or well, the first couple of boatloads anyway. And reservation and order holders have been getting phone calls from Tesla with delivery dates around mid to late September. Which is not too bad. I'm happy for those people and congratulations to all those people with their new Teslas. Awesome. What it really annoys me though is getting me it's not, not really annoying, it's just a bit frustrating, especially when you're waiting so long, is it see people post on Twitter and post on Facebook and those sort of things, how excited they are to get the Model 3 delivery dates. Congratulations again. But, when they say, I didn't have a reservation and I was just a walk-in order to the showroom, so you know, probably a month or two after orders have been opened, they walk in the showroom, place an order, and they get a delivery date. Now, for myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people out there who have had reservations from you know as far back as 2016, our reservation is about 12 months old and we placed our order on the very first hour of the orders going live. So you get a text message saying we can now place orders. Now it is very frustrating when you've been waiting so long and somebody just rocks up and says, hey, I got my reservation, I got my um, delivery date already and I didn't have a reservation. How awesome is that? Well, yeah, it's awesome. But after hearing that half a dozen times, you start thinking, well, why did I even bother putting a reservation in? I mean, that's $1,500, I think it was. Yeah, that could have been better spent elsewhere at the time, or put on your mortgage and had to take home, you just had to put a mortgage or you know, savings towards the car, I guess, which of course I've just away. But yeah, it is a little frustrating. So, for the time being, I've taken myself off um, or muted the Tesla Model 3 Facebook page and tried to ignore those posts on Twitter of people bragging about their delivery dates without having a reservation because after a while it does get to you. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but, but I'm also fully aware of the workload the Tesla staff are under at the moment. I mean, apparently there's a couple of, three or four thousand Model 3s on the way to be delivered over the period of a few weeks or months. So I imagine those guys are working pretty flat out. So I understand that the delays in getting deliveries out there and they've got to process the vehicles, clean them up, add options that people put on there, I guess. And, um, yeah, get that sort of stuff. I imagine they're working flat out and they're doing the best they can. So. Hats off to all those Tesla staff in Australia that are working their asses off to get them all three out. Uh, like I said, it is a little frustrating when you've had a reservation you hear nothing for months. And what was you originally believed to be an August delivery is now turning out to be probably October, if not later, the way things are going. Because our Model 3 is a P3 minus with a 488XXX VIN number, which apparently was supposed to arrive two days ago, but it's still delayed and it's still on a boat somewhere around the Pacific due to arrive next weekend, so I seriously doubt we'll get our car before October, even though it was an August delivery. But, that's one subject out of the way. The second one, which I is being annoying the crap out of me. The Porsche Taycan seems to be quite an awesome EV. Equivalent performance to a Tesla Model S, which is great, but it's all the comparisons, it's comparing the Model S and the Taycan. Now to me, only point of similarity they have is their performance. Taycan seems to be a purpose-built sports car. Sure, it's a four-door, but there's no way you can get four people comfortably in that car. Two, yes, four, no. The Model S, on the other hand, easily four or five people in that car. Not a problem. It is a four-door, five-seat family saloon. Lots of cargo space, long range. Sure, it has a performance, but it's the only thing that's probably coming close to Taycan. Taycan seems quite capable of holding its own on the track lap after lap after lap, or less, not so much with um, battery overheating. But what's annoying is that every EV news outlet, or every car outlet, and every fanboy is comparing the two and saying that taking is not as good as the Model S, because the Model S does blah blah blah. Well, they're not the same market sector. And then it takes me on to the, um, the Tesla killer title they're labelling this thing. No, it's not. It's not a Tesla killer. Someone looking to buy a Taycan is not in the same market as someone for a Tesla Model S. Firstly, price point, far more expensive. Is it a port, I guess. Secondly, the market segment. Again, 
the Porsche Taycan looks to be aiming at the Porsche 911 buyer, maybe. People looking to buy Aston Martins, people looking to buy Mercedes AMG, people looking to buy you know, M Series BMWs, people looking to buy um, even, probably even Ferraris and McLarens. They're probably the target market for the Taycan. Not sure how it's Tesla buyer. So I don't see them as competitors or a Tesla killer. What I see it as is another EV in the um, EV stable that is an internal combustion engine killer. It will take sales away from internal combustion supercars or hypercars. Not a Tesla killer, no. It's not going to destroy Tesla suffers at all. And thirdly, today's news, or this morning's news on the way to work, was the release of the Volkswagen ID3. Now, I'm certain as anything, in the next coming days and weeks, we're going to hear countless stories about why the ID3 is a Tesla Model 3 killer. Again, for the same reason. To me, a different segment car. Now, the pricing seems a little bit more expensive than what people were hoping. Yeah, but definitely don't see it as a Tesla Model 3 killer. Different segment car, pricing will be similar. Performance, no comparison at all. Again, the Model 3 seems to be a different segment in the market to the ID3. The ID3 seems to be going for the people who will be looking to buy maybe the um, Nissan Leaf, the BMW i3s, the, um, the new what is it, the new MG EV. That sort of market segment is what I see that going at. Also, taking market away from the internal combustion equivalent. Volkswagen Golf buyers would normally be looking to buy the diesels and petrols. Might be now considered buying this. People looking to buy, say, Subarus or Toyota, Corollas or Camrys, that sort of market. Lower end. I wouldn't say the lower end, but lower price point than what Tesla is at at the moment. So again, I do not see it as a Tesla Model 3 killer, though I'm sure that we count the stories claiming it is in the next week or so. Again, I haven't seen any yet, because the ID3 is only out today, and I'm sure those journalists are rapidly typing up the stories right now as I'm speaking. And again, probably the same with all those fanboys on Facebook and Twitter and everybody else claiming that the ID3 sucks compared to the Model 3 because, again, A, B, C, D, whatever they can find. But again, to me, ID3 release is a good thing than the Porsche Taycan, because it proves that big automotive makers such as Porsche, Volkswagen, are now taking the EV industry seriously. Now, if they plan on making billions of these ID3s, fantastic. Every EV on the road means cleaner air for everybody else. And how is that a bad thing? So, again, not a lot of Tesla killer. Actually, I'll take, I think it'll take quite a lot to have an actual te Tesla killer, especially over their updates. The Tesla technology seems to be just, you know, the people are saying a decade ahead, which means they've got that much of a head start. And also, too, it's not like Tesla are going to stand still with this. Sure, another EV maker in, say, the next two, three, five years might come up with Tesla equivalent technology with batteries and motors and everything else, but then again, Tesla's going to be another 10 years further ahead again, so who knows. So, um, that's my rant video for the drive home today. Bit of an unusual one, because I, I wouldn't call myself a Tesla fanboy. I'm a Tesla fan, yes, but I'm willing to accept they do have um, faults, and so does every car manufacturer out there. But to go as far as calling a Tesla, no, I'm calling the Volkswagen ID3, the Tay, Porsche Taycan, Tesla Killers, no, it's just bullshit, not going to happen. And again, it's frustrating to not have a phone call yet on the delivery date of my Model 3 when others out there have already got theirs and people are now taking delivery. But again, congratulations to all those guys. I hope you guys are watching because I really do love all the Tesla owners and their adventures and stuff and how they're enjoying their cars because I, I can't wait for it myself. So that's it today, the rant video vlog, don't do very, very often. Coming up soon will be more Nissan Leafs content, as I get um, access to use that car more often and take on a few road trips soon and make some videos about that. Maybe the Nissan Leaf Rapid Gate in Australia, who knows? Find out in summer, I guess, don't we? So once again, if you got this far, I really appreciate it if you watch this far, it means a lot. And um, so please take care, don't forget to drive safe, and I'll talk to you all later. Have a good day. Bye.